Here we go. Empoli versus Salernitana. Empoli at plus 215. Um, Salernitana, a favourite. Who would have thought that? They've been uh, named the worst <laughs> side in Serie A history. Right. And they're at plus 115 for the match day 37. The goals are under over three with minus 110 being with the over. The draws at plus 285. I mean, up. Uh, Salonitaro has turned this around and you've got to give credit because they made that mid-season change and now they, they're so confident home or away. Yeah, I mean, this is, I remember actually at the start of the season I was in the south of France and you're like, this is the worst team I think I've ever watched play football. And then we laughed because they have such a small budget. They are such a, you know, a small club and it was like, it's a little bit of a fairy tale for them. But yes, obviously they had problems and they had like, they were relying on a, on a very old Frank Robbery. But they really have turned it around. And a lot of that has to do with the management of Davide Nicola, who arrived you know, not that long ago. And more importantly, I think their fan base, they're one of the few stadiums that pack it, that all the home fans come and actually cheer on the team. They're so obsessed with Salernitana. And that really changes things when you're fighting relegation. Empoli started the season so well. Do you remember that? They were, what, the second best away team after Napoli? Do you remember the records and the numbers? Yeah. That they and ever since they sold Samuel Ricci to Torino, they've fallen. But Aslani, who is supposed to be the guy that takes over, has started to grow. He scored his first Serie A goal, so that was pretty amazing to watch against Inter. And they are a very nice team, Empoli, in the way that they play football. I, I really like this match. I think it's going to be really fun to watch. Everyone wants Salernitana to fight relegation. Um, so I see both teams scoring goals in this um, just because, you know, you, you know they can. Um, I just don't know whether it's going to be four. I mean, I would put it as exactly three goals. So that's the only thing that, but I do think both teams um, over and both teams to score in over two and a half is probably a solid bet. Matty, I cannot believe that I'm looking at a few different numbers on here and they just boggle me. Salinitana, favourites away from home at plus 115. Salinitana, to score twice, is minus 125. So almost they're saying this is a minimum three goals. Empoli mm -hmm. one, Salinitana two. This could be 4-2, couldn't it? It, it definitely could be 4-2, but I, I'm not exactly sure which team is going to score four goals. Yeah. Yeah. Um, both teams to score is graded out at 70% home and away for these teams on the season, and so is the over two and a half. So I think both teams to score an over two and a half is a decent look for this game. Really good head-to-head -head numbers on this. Obviously, both of these sides were promoted this season, uh, played each other a few times last year. Um, I I don't really know how I see this game going. Impoli kind of just in free fall, Siler Nitana fighting uh, for their life. But Impoli has conceded over one and a half goals at home in 72% of their games. That is unreal. Um, and actually, <laughs> both of these teams have uh, allowed at least one goal in 94% 94, 94 of home and away matches uh, on this season. So both teams to score is a great play, in my opinion. Um, and if I had to pick somebody to score twice, it would definitely be Salernitana. But Salernitana is also conceding over one and a half at 56% on the road. Okay, um, let's and that number is... So Definitely well, mate, a little bit lower the last few games, but I, I I do expect them to score twice in this game. You saw Pinamonti against Inter. Do you really think that the side who managed to score two goals in the first half against Inter can't manage two against Salernitana? I, I no. don't think they could manage manage two against Inter in the first half if they did if they played them ten more times. I, I, I don't know how they managed. But they to scored do that. two and had one disallowed, which is very unlucky yeah, and exactly. threatened. They were they were frightening in the first fifteen minutes. I mean, that was the game. That was the game that I went under three and a half. And like, there's four at half time. I, I just oh, can't I, like get my head around them. And also combined, for, they've only kept clean sheets in three of twenty uh, games. So it's like, come on now. In twenty games, only three clean sheets. I think that maybe the over three is is a go way to go because we're not just going to see a one one draw. So you're going to get a minimum of a push. There seems to be a lot of chat in this as well. Danny saying agreed, both teams scoring over two and a half. But when we have a little look at the official picks here, Mina is the only one that's gone with an official pick, and she's got uh, both teams scoring over two and a half goals at minus one twenty five. It looks like an absolute banker.